Today on Crash Mastermind, different domains analyzed a redesigned building in Amsterdam. The impact of the redesign on the existing building is being investigated by five different domains. The domains are conservation, reuse, architecture, sustainability and heritage. Together they form an enthusiastic team. The project in Amsterdam is located at the Hottesplanzoen, which was originally built in 1896 as two public schools. With some small interventions over the years, the Amsterdam School of Arts became the owner in 97. The status of this phase will be considered as the pre-design. The redesign was made in 2013 by Marx and Stekete for the Rijnwater Academy. By consulting municipal archives, drawings of the architects, and documents and photos of the staff members of the Rijnwart Academy, comparisons between the pre-design and the redesign could be made. Visiting the building and interviewing employees of the Rijnwart Academy was also essential for the analysis. Because the monumental building was redesigned with contrasting materials, I chose for the compatibility indicator. The building also received a Brigham certificate for its sustainable intervention. That's why I chose for sustainability. The masonry is a very durable material. How can the design improve the building that's already durable? That's why I chose for durability. Visiting the building and receiving executed drawings, I found out that contrasting materiality has been added, except for the monumental facades where identical continuity in materials is visible. And that marks applied new sustainable interventions in the field of management, health, energy, water, materials and waste. And there's not that much changed about the durability of the conserved building, except for the new roof facade structure that covers parts of the building. By comparing the redesign and the pre-design, I found out that the impact of the compatibility is an almost seamless transition from the new materials to the conserved pre-design materials. The impact for sustainability is the Brigham certificate, which resulted in an excellent score for a redesigned building. The durability of the conserved building has changed a lot because the building was already quite durable. Centrality subdivided as number of spatial connections. How close is a space to all others in the system? How often is that space on the shortest paths of the system? And how well connected are the spaces connected to that one? Diversity is the amount of different functions and accessibility through how many spaces one has to go through to reach final destination. Diversity is high in both cases, but higher after renovation extensions influence that. Average depth is between 5 to 6 before, but higher after because of partitioning of rooms following program requirements and constraints of original layout, which was kept after renovation. Centralizations don't follow estimated ideal values because these constraints were not considered. Diversity is increased but compromises education area, resulting in non-ideal situations. Accessibility is worsened because of compartmentation of rooms, causing additional non-useful hallways. Centrality remains similar, central circulation with educational functions around, but social spaces benefit from higher eyeing vector centrality despite building's constraints. The shed roof affects the aesthetics of the building both from the exterior and the interior. I decided to study the evolution of the rooftop form for the space indicator. Courts became interior spaces or closed, which is why I choose courts as a connection indicator. For the detail indicator, I zoomed into the ground floor courts to study the irregular finish of the openings. The collected documentation of the pre-design from the primary source was compared with the data received from the architect. The new rooftop level replaced the old one, respecting the municipal regulations for keeping the same height. In the pre-design, the three courts were not functioning as light courts. On the ground floor, they were closed by the roofs. The original finish on the ground floor courts were kept in the new design. I define the specific criteria so changes corresponding to the academy's needs are judged as beneficial. The new rooftop level is more spacious and comfortable for the user as it is connected to the original attic floor. The two courts are functioning as light courts again. They are integrated in the building interior. The connection within the buildings were improved by the new openings of the courtyards on the ground floor. A part of sustainability was already discussed in conservation. This was one of the reasons why ecology is chosen as a team. The main reason is that various articles claim that the redesign would increase the ecological value of Amsterdam. This was worth investigating by the indicators access to nature, animals and responsible materials. Taking these three indicators into account, an analysis is made by comparing the pre-design with the redesign. First, the nature and the landscape is analyzed. Second, the habitat of a few different species is investigated. And last of all, it is analyzed if building materials which were used then and are used now come from a responsible source. By taking the first quote into account about that the redesign would increase the ecological value of Amsterdam and by the score of the Bream assessment, it is conceivable that the redesign is very sustainable. And indeed it has many sustainable solutions. 
but by focusing on the theme of ecology, it can be concluded that some great opportunities have been missed. The heritage domain. The first indicator is chosen because the traditional chalet style roof is characteristic for the building style of the end of the 19th century. The second one is chosen because the school is an early example of a so-called gangenschool. The third indicator is chosen because the site has a long history which can still be felt. The gathered data of the before and after situation was analyzed by the remove as and or kept analysis and by coding descriptions of different perspectives and images. With respect to the roof, a new modern shed roof has been added. And for the space arrangement, the courtyards were opened up, what influences the use of the ground floor corridors. The heritage assessment framework and e-commerce table were used to come to the impact. The newly added shed roof emphasized in a positive way the different ages of the respective roofs. For the corridor, there is a positive impact on the higher levels, but a slightly negative impact on the ground floor. The design of Annette and Marks did not influence the collective memory. The value of the first two indicators outweighed the last indicator. Each domain addresses in its indicators analysis some elements that are common to other domains. Conservation and sustainability's values are highly influenced by materiality, where areas reuse touches on the topics of corridors or circulation and courtyards, used as leisure areas, which are also addressed by heritage and architecture, who also analyze the roof. The table shows an impact assessment of common indicators in different domains. Depending on the domain and the study focus, the impact of the common indicators changes, except for the roof and for corridor indicators, which have the same impact. In overall, we think the impact of the intervention is beneficial.